Good morning, Sylvia. It's day nine of our adventure, and today we travel from Holbrook to Needles, California, and it's going to be Route 66 all the way. Uh, I may stop in Winslow and stand on the corner. All the classic stops between here and Flagstaff, and then we're going to take the old route up to, uh, is it Peach Springs? I think so. Hackberry Store, uh, and then uh, Oatman. So it's going to be a good day. It's about 45 degrees. So this is a pretty famous Route 66 stop. I'm not sure why. I think it was just another uh, tourist kind of thing, but apparently, you know, here it is. This sign, uh, the rabbit, is pretty well known as a Route 66 attraction. So I can't do it by myself, but to do this attraction correctly, you're supposed to get on the rabbit and have someone take a picture of you. And this is an official Route 66 roadside attraction. Opened in 1949, tourists were drawn to stop and see what Here It Is was all about. Uh, they placed mileage signs along the highway counting down the distance to the oversized rabbit. So I hadn't planned to stop here because I've been here half a dozen times over the years, but you can't come through this town in Arizona without stopping here and standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. This guy right here. And there's the girl in the flatbed Ford. And the artwork up on the wall. I like that. And then if we turn on around slowly, flatbed Ford. Perfect. Now come over here. Dedicated September 11th, 1999. I was cruising Google Maps before my trip, just looking along my route to look for interesting things, and I happened to find this one, and it's not in operation right now, but I actually stopped here about 30 years ago when it was in operation. It was a, a tourist thing, souvenirs and that kind of thing, and I guess it's a legitimate Route 66 attraction. They seem to think so. I'm near Meteor Crater, and this spot is called Meteor City. I don't know if the dome had a name or anything, but anyway, I just had to give it a quick stop. This is Two Guns, Arizona. And this place has a very long history. You can Google it if you want to. There's lots of detail. Uh, but it was built primarily as just a tourist trap. Maybe tourist trap is a little bit harsh, but it was built to attract tourists with uh, some questionable stories about what had happened here and some mocked up Indian stuff. But it had a zoo, uh, campgrounds, cottages, filling station. There was a lot of structure here. Apparently one Indian tribe murdered another Indian tribe here in some caves. And the guy that bought this property and created this tourist spot really played up that story. and. In the cave, he installed lighting and uh, some artificial artifacts to to make it more real, I guess. And I'm guessing this is the remnants of the zoo. There's lots of what I call chicken wire cages, which would have obviously been meant to keep animals. And so this whole strip down through here must have been the zoo. And there's a wide walkway in front of it. It was probably a very popular spot back in the day. They definitely spent a lot of time building th this attraction. It was probably pretty fun. So I can't ride my bike over there and I'm not gonna walk over there, but there's quite a few abandoned structures uh, right along through, through there. I don't know what they were, but like I said, he had uh, campgrounds, cabins, uh, all kinds of stuff here for your tourists, to separate your tourists from your money.
this spot won't be here much longer and anyone that knows anything about Route 66 knows where this is but I'll tell you anyway it's twin arrows and one of the arrows has uh, rotted and fallen down it looks like the shaft was made from telephone poles but it won't be here much longer and uh, you can't see it but right over there is a snow capped peak I'm about I don't know, 25 miles from Flagstaff so I'm probably heading that direction probably go around the base of that I really don't know anything about it but it's a nice view from here why do people feel the need to cover everything in graffiti I don't know if that's a gang sign or a, a Native American sign. I, I don't know what it is, but I kind of like that one. I'm in Parks, Arizona, west of Flagstaff. There's some snow right over there. And this is a 1931 alignment of Route 66 through Parks. This is Old Route 66, west of Flagstaff, kind of parallel to I-40, and I'm going to Seligman right now. I think it's about 19 miles down the road. Okay, get ready. There's some Burma-shaped signs. I'll read them. You may not be able to see them. He tried to cross as fast train neared. Death didn't draft him. He volunteered. Vermishade. <laughs> if hugging on highways is your sport, trade in your car for a Davenport. Vermishade. Not sure what that means. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm at the snow cap in Seligman. I just got the snow cone. An official Route 66 roadside attraction built 1953 out of scrap lumber. Lori and I spent quite a bit of time in Seligman uh, in 2017, so I'm not going to really look around, just kind of cruise through. I did get my snow cone at the snow cap though. If daisies are your favorite flower, keep pushing up those miles per hour. <laughs> Verma shade. Crossing means go slow. 
that old bull is some cow's bow. <laughs> Burma shave. This is one of the little places that I like. Lori and I were here in 2017, I believe. And I just like the color of the sign and also the cafe sign that's inside the building. I just like the colors and the style. sign says no trespassing so I'm not going to walk around but the whole thing doesn't look in too bad of shape but there's no reason to have a motel or a cafe out here in the middle of nowhere after I-40 opened no one comes here anymore if you're a Route 66 buff you've got to drive this road from Seligman up to Peach Springs through by the Hackberry store and back down to Kingman you're not going to be on the original road bed, but you're going to see it quite frequently parallel to the road. It's a good drive. If you know anything about the route, you know where I am right now. Hackberry Store. General Store. <laughs> I made it to Cool Springs, headed over to Oatman. And the air is a little hazy today, and they say there's a, some like an inversion layer and uh, uh, the dust, the wind's picking up the dust. I'm heading up over the pass to Oatman. I think it's Sitgreaves. I think that's correct for the pass. But I've driven right by this a time or two and didn't even know it existed. And it is Schaefer Spring. And a little bit of history, during the WPA construction of the Gold Road section from Gold Road Mine to Kingman, sources of water for animals, cars, and humans alike were hard to find. A man named Schaefer found water seeping from cliff walls and built a basin made of indigenous rock and concrete. He set it where the springs could drain into it. Locals kept goldfish, snails, and plants in it to keep the waters fresh and algae free. Many local residents call it the goldfish pond. The spring has frozen over or gone dry, but someone always restocks it with fish. The only hint of its presence is a column of stone stairs built up the cliff wall to the basin. Okay, let's go see what it looks like. Oh, there it is. And there it is. Oh, it's pretty neat. Look at that. Very nice. Flowers. Growing the little nooks and crannies. And there's the fishbowl spring. Doesn't look too clear though. But I found it. Yeah, there's not much water flowing into it. That's the overflow right there. Not much water. 
What have you? What have you? I said there wasn't much water seeping out, but it's enough to make all the bees happy. Can you hear them? You see them? I guess bees got a drink too. It's pretty neat. What you looking for? <laughs> this is Main Street Oatman. Where the donkeys roam free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're very tame and they're expecting a handout all the time, aren't you? Expecting a handout all the time. Oh! What's going on here? I like that strap down the back. That's pretty neat. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to grab a bite to eat and one cold one since I'm on two wheels. One tall cold one, but there is no place to eat in here. It seems a little odd. There's quite an aroma of donkey poop though. Good night, Sylvia. So the motel art makes some sense today. This is some type of a plant, a close-up with pebbles and water. This one, if you can't see it for the glare, is a dandelion. So decent motel art today. <laughs>